Now here's a question. Am I too tired to stream today? I don't know. <laughs> I'm here. I might be too tired to stream. But I haven't decided it yet. I worked for 10 hours today. Already on my feet. And here I am. Rocking out again. This isn't what I wanted though. Also I realized that I've let off... A lot of stuff. It's the fastest who gets paid, and it's the fastest who gets late. Why didn't I hear that? Oh my god! Oh, oh yeah. Wrong monitor. That, that was so loud. <laughs> Moisty, what's up? This isn't this isn't what I wanted to listen to. I wanted to listen to this, but let's go to the song radio for this. What about this? Yeah. Man, you sounds good. It does, but I don't even know if I have the energy to cook it right now. I'm like 50-50 on even finish, like continuing stream, and I just started. <laughs> That's wild to think about. But here I am, rocky like a hurricane. Whew. Oh, brother. We're doing it. Hi, I give you my energy. Thanks, Jim. Thank you. We've made a lot of good food this week. I think I want to make more good food. Now that is something that isn't that interesting, as many of us would say. Ferris Power Cheese, I'm happy to see you streaming again tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Here we are. Here I am, Rocky Like a Hurricane. I've had all the coffee I can have for the day. Have some water. I'm gonna make some food. I'm gonna... See what happens. I have food I want to make because I don't want to have to make it. Like, I don't want to make good things on Tuesday and Wednesday when I'm not streaming. Just because if I don't make it, it'll go bad. Um, And I'm here tonight. So I figure, why not make it now? I had my setup halfway set up just in case I got out of work early. I did not get out of work early today. Swill, hi. What's up? How are you? Welcome in. I can feel one of my hairs getting me. There it is. <laughs> um, so I'm going to start like making stuff. I don't even know. Just start pulling stuff out. How are you all today? Scale of 1 to 10, what's going on? Hi. Oh, man. I forgot I haven't said anything for like four hours. <laughs> no, not four hours, actually. It would be like two hours. <laughs> but I, I'm good. Hope you all are, too. I'm going to get my working towel. Solid eight? Wow. Solid eight? That's sick. Let's fucking go. What's new? What are we working with out there? What kind of sick drinks you got going on? Happy Saturday. It is the weekend, but to me it's... To me it's the equivalent of Wednesday. For the 9 to 5 working week folk. So, happy hump Saturday. <laughs> Uh, I am right in the middle. Get my working towel going, otherwise how am I going to continue? I'm 
checking out my my fingerling potatoes here. I want to make sure they're still good. I think they are. I have had them for a minute. This is a little green. I don't know why. It shouldn't be green. What are you doing? Probably knock these bad boys out. If you don't know what fingerling potatoes are, it's kind of like uh, like gold potatoes, like little guys, but they're just long. They grow in a fun shape. It's a fun shape of a potato, you know? I almost bought more of them today, but I don't know. I don't know if it's that that normal stuff. What's purple cauliflower? That's a good question. Please be good. I've left you up here for too long. So good. It's still good. It's cauliflower. It's cauliflower. <laughs> but it's purple. If I boil it, it'll probably lose its color. Ooh, there's a moldy part. Okay, we'll just we'll just work around that. We'll just we'll just go around that. We're gonna roast you. We're gonna roast you, little little guy. Looks like a huge nug. It, it is. It's a huge collie nug. Thank you for the bits, Ronnie. How are you? Hi, Bloner. It's got a little mold part, but we'll work around that. I'll get there in a second. Um, first thing I want to do is probably cut these fingerling potatoes in half, start marinating them in some sort of thing. Uh, you're good. How about me? How about me? I'm good. Doing a grand experiment of going live right now when I overworked myself this weekend at IRL job and uh, doing stuff and coming together and seeing what I do. I, I wanted to make the food that I have. And I think it, I got some other ideas that I didn't finish quite yet. But I'm into it. So... I'll get my second wind in just a moment, I'd say. But I have work today already. So, purple cauliflower. I had this banana idea. We'll see. I want to make, like, a hot sauce for my potatoes and for my cauliflower. I want these to basically be on the same... When I say tray, I mean, like, plate kind of a deal. Um, hello there. Hi, Alejandro. Thank you for the lurk. We've taken care of a lot of really cool ideas this week. Maybe get a nap soon? <laughs> yeah, I'll just take a nap at everyone's bedtime. <laughs> Lurking because building a bookshelf. You should be back. Good luck on the bookshelf. If you are like me, you'll do everything great and perfect, and then one item will be put on backwards, and then you have to undo half of it <laughs> to, to fix it. Oh, man. That was a fun... That's a fun conversation to have. To realize that it runs in your family to, like, accidentally mess up f furniture as you're building it, and then get frustrated about it. It's fun that way, right? We all experience experiences in different ways. You know, I feel like I'm going to put all these together. The thing is, is that cauliflower cooks in a much shorter amount of time than potatoes do. But I know that they'll need to marinate regardless. Because it's more fun that way for it to be a little bit marinated. Hello! You know, Sheik, hi. 
Welcome in. Thanks for the alert. Hope you're doing well. Hi! Right. <laughs> hey, Swill. First things first, break it down. With our knife that we have sharpened earlier this week on stream. Fingerling potatoes, eh? I don't like breaking these down too much because that defeats the purpose, you know? You want to kind of just cut them in half. Leaves an exposed area. Let's them roast, whether it be flat or face up. Gives a contact area that you can work with. Just cut them in half, long ways. Because they are fingerlings, so you want to keep them long. Long like our fingers. Always practice safety whenever cutting things, of course. I did leave these for like a week. They seem to be fine, though. And you know what? I don't have a lot of these potatoes. I thought I had more. A pint is a, a pint, or whatever size container this is, is whatever. I'm just here making some food. Wonder what kind of spice blend I should use for these. You know what I'm thinking? Thinking some... Well, you know, what my end result is going to be. I got to think about that, too. What is our goal? I want to make potato. And yes, I said it like that. Potato. I'll make some potato. And I'll make some cauliflower. And I'll make some... Sauce for them. And then we still have... Um... We have the possibility of making like a non-alcoholic base of flavor for stuff. And I want to do, I think, banana because I bought banana chips for like no reason so far. Because I was going to do a strawberry banana version of a cocktail. And then I was like, no, I'm going to make a Negroni. It's going to be a smoked strawberry Negroni. I made it. It's good. It's great. It's perfect. It's wonderful. Stop looking at it. It's mine. Um, but really, I also wanted to make, like, a kind of banana combination for that. We still have the gin. It's infusing with smoked strawberries, right? Well, what I was thinking was we make a second cocktail. One that has the banana. I would almost like to make something that's like pina colada-ish, but it ha but you know, it blends up. I don't think it's gonna work, unless we make like a batch of it. I don't know if it'll work. But again, the first thing I'm doing is the first thing is first, and that is to cut my potatoes in half. And to marinate them. I kind of want more potatoes. Because, like, take a look at this. Hang on. With our cork container of choice. I'm going to eat some of these tonight. Ah! <laughs> Lost one. Ah! It's fine. Got our cork container of choice. Throw it in there. It's about exactly a quart. Whoa, I, didn't, I missed one? I just put it in there somehow? Alright. Here you go. Wow, it's like exactly a quart. Isn't that amazing? But we're going to have other stuff on it. We're going to have other stuff with it. This is me thinking about how am I going to store it once I'm done. So it's going to end up being more than that anyway. Plus I have the other stuff I'm cooking. Um, I say I add more potatoes. Because I have a bunch of russets, too. So, why not just bolster it with a little bit more potato, eh? You're like a potato? I do, too. Home fry style. 
I like to cut them on angles if I'm doing that. Triangles, essentially. Gives it a thin, crispier side. Now, I'm not going to save half of a, a potato. <laughs> You know, but is this like defeating the purpose? Sure. Any big pieces that are like unwieldy, cut them in half. Oh, watch your fingers. Watch your fingers. Ugh, I'm going to have so many potatoes now. This is a huge potato. <laughs> I just realized. Watch your fingers. Take away the little roots that pop out. Cool. Fingerlings. Our russets. Should I have chosen a bigger bowl? Don't tell me what to do. Yeah, I should have. Oh, well. I'm a general sleepy time. Because can I, like, flip it in there? Not really. Much better. Now... What's better with potatoes? If we're not gonna brine them, uh, we should dry brine them in a way. So we're going to hit it with the flavors that we want first, right? If we did onions and garlic into the mix, we would end up with burnt onions and garlic in the end. Means we want dry spices. We want uniform spices according to what sauces we're going to be using later. Means. I'm pulling out the mortar and pestle again. I'm going to hit it with coriander. Coriander seed, that is. And while I'm at it, hit it with some black peppercorn. Because it's here. I'm going to crush it. Hell yeah. The black peppercorns are kind of rough. They don't want they don't want to cooperate. So, I'm going to lean into it. Very resistant to me doing anything. Black pepper and coriander put together. Crushed roughly like this is essentially Pastrami spice, by the way. If you like pastrami, then this is the combination that you like. If you happen to be a fan of something like Montreal steak seasoning or things like that, this would also be right up your alley. In my opinion. I am actually leaning my body weight into it, but once the, like, majority of the black peppercorns, when they actually get cracked, they're fine. They're easy to crush up again more. Once you get past that, like, perfect sphere resistance, the arc of support that it has, then you are left with... Cracked open seeds. And it smells awesome. 
You had a beer that tasted just like Montreal smoked meat yesterday. Oh, that's weird. What are they doing? Why'd they do that? Why'd they make that? Were they like, you know who would love this? People who love steak. <laughs> wonder though um considering finding caraway but that's fine uh this isn't a lot but it is enough to like kind of get the the mood going You don't need a lot. It's extremely potent. Um, to give it an herbal component too, I'm going to do dried thyme. A hefty amount. And then to bind it to the sauce that I'm going to make later. Again, later the sauce that I'm going to use is going to be basically pepper, yellow, it's going to be habanero, yellow bell pepper, turmeric, and like fresh turmeric and um like mustard ground mustard i'm gonna do a pepper which will be aleppo pepper here it was smoked over beech wood oh my goodness oh was it so it was a smoked beer and then they probably brewed it with some sort of seed combination in order to finish out the flavor I am um I am not sold on smoked beers as a concept. I think liquid smoke is difficult to deal with, but when you have to batch something massive like beer, uh, it can get a little it can get a little aggressive, you know. But if it was good, it was good. That's all that matters, you know. If it's good, it's good. That's the rating. Now that I put the dry spices on there like this, see, you enjoyed it? Hell yeah, then. That's all that matters. Uh, we are going to throw on there some oil so that it can cook. Uh, but in order to penetrate the actual, uh, in order to have this penetrate the actual cell walls of the plant stuff that's in here uh we want to hit it with some salt that's enough and then you need it to dissolve a little bit but we want to add some acid uh, you want acid with all of this? Uh, we're going to do lemon. Cook it with lemon. I don't want to get any seeds mixed in because they'll burn, but it also be weird if you find them by accident. So I'm going to pick them out of the top. And then we're just going to go ahead and squeeze these lemons out. Over all of these potatoes. And immediately put four seeds directly in front of me. <laughs> I mean, I can just use my hand. I'm acting like this is already hot. <laughs> Basically a whole lemon. To complement the uh, lemon juice, I'm going to do a splash of champagne vinegar as well. Just a splash. All over. And to finish the coating process, just some standard olive oil. Not extra virgin or anything like that. Boom. Boom. 
You can use a stone, you can use a, a spoon or a utensil to mix it up. But I like to get my hands in there, which is why I bought a pack of gloves. <laughs> so I can just go in there and do one of these. Pick it up from the bottom and raise your hands. Because all the liquid will find its way to the bottom. So by reaching down and pulling the ones at the bottom up, you'll get it to run over all of the other ones. And now the salt should have dissolved into the oil and the lemon juice and the vinegar. It's going to smell kind of unpleasant because honestly, vinegar doesn't smell great. <laughs> but it's an acid. That's why it's there. And it was only a little bit. And that's a liquid that will help penetrate in there. And when you do that, it coats your potatoes pretty nicely. You know what I mean? Uh, I'm going to let these sit. For a little while, while I prepare anything else that I have, they'll absorb some of the flavors. Uh, the salt will help break down the starches a little bit. And then we're going to roast them. Usually I will parboil uh, or like partially boil and cook potatoes before I put them into an oven or I stir fry them because you want it to cook the inside. When you boil them, you're not trying to actually cook them. You're trying to get inside of them. Um, which is a good move. And if I do boil them, I will typically put baking soda into the water, which gives it a base alkaline pH which breaks the starches in the potatoes. I'm not doing this. I'm just explaining what I usually do, which I thought about it for today, but today I actually don't want them to roast like that. I want them to be clean on there, a little bit crispy, but not, um, not mashed a little bit. When you do it in the alkaline water, it will create a layer of potato on the outside that has broken up almost like mashed potatoes and then you roast them or fry them immediately afterwards and the potatoes will crisp up kind of like a uh i don't know how to put it other than kind of like an outside mashed potato inside it's like crispy mash on the outside and then on the inside we fingering potatoes in it hi sylvan <laughs> what's up Nah, we got fingerling potatoes, which I realize is not the most exciting thing to put as the first item on my title, but I already did it. <laughs> so, ah, here we are. How are you? You know what I'm probably going to do is turn on my oven now. How do I close this? I, I opened something up and I don't know how to close it. There it is. Just playing ESO and vibing? That's awesome. Uh, how's your Saturday been? Busy. I worked a lot earlier. Um, and I, I wanted to to challenge myself to be live but i am making some silly mistakes already because i am tired but that's not that's fine <laughs> i can be tired i wanted to make food that i had that i didn't want to go bad within you know a couple weeks within the week and if I waited, I wouldn't have been able to make it today. I would have been able to maybe make it Wednesday. 
But uh, if I make food, I want to make it on stream for this one because it's good. I'm going to make a lot of cool stuff. So I wanted to do it now. <laughs> I want to do it now. So right now I'm marinating my uh, potatoes that I have here. How's your Saturday been? How are you all doing? I have to work on some video stuff too. Not just like, oh, it's, here's another TikTok, even though I do actually like them, the ones that I make at least, because uh, they're, ba they're basically stream highlights. I have one account that's stream highlights, and I have another account that is sitting and waiting for other stuff that I have, that I haven't figured out how I want to present it yet, but I have stuff recorded. Um... And I also have to go through the two streams that we did this week already. Because there's a lot. Sorry you're so tired. Hope this food will do you good. Ah, it'll be fine. If I'm if I'm that tired, I'm not scared to end stream. But like, I've worked tired a lot in my life. I've been tired most of my life. So, um, no, what else is new, right? Let's fucking go. This is going to be great. Look how tasty this is going to be. That's what's important here. To our vegan friends out there, this is vegan so far. So far, I haven't done anything to it to ruin it for you. But it is what it is. Let's break down a purple cauliflower head. Thanks for wishing good things for me. I appreciate that. Purple cauliflower. The big reveal. <laughs> the big old moldy part on the other side. It's still good for the most part. A little bit of mold will only make me trip balls, you know? Nah, I'm just kidding. Cauliflower is one of your favorite vegetables? It is awesome. I had a bunch of cauliflower for lunch today, actually. Um, Buffalo. Buffalo sauce and cauliflower goes really well together. I know it was kind of like a trend for a long while. Um, buffalo cauliflower. <laughs> that one just jumped at me. But it actually does go really well with everything. Purple, I mean, it doesn't taste any different. Also, the fact that I can just, like, pick off the florets here is a little strange to me. Usually I cut them all off, but I'm, like, kind of, like, peeling them off here. Mmm... Maybe we'll blanch it to be safe.
What a grand experiment right now. The grand experiment. I bet they I bet they would have eaten it if they were starving. <laughs> yeah. Um <laughs> Yeah, you're right. We would have. Um What would be the move here? Saltwater bath and boil? I threw away the moldy pieces already. But there is actually a little bit of not greatness happening in certain spots on these. Not terrible, not great. Hmm. Ah, oh, fuck. God damn it. Hang on. <laughs> I'm looking at it and I'm like, um. Maybe? <laughs> I mean, it's it's still good for the most part. I probably could figure out, but I just don't want to throw away half of it. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Ah, oh, fuck. Yeah, friends in chat. Good to see you. I'm just going to hold Azteca for a second. I feel like this is the easiest one to do. I just realized I was wearing a black shirt. <laughs> or I am wearing a black shirt. <laughs> I don't know what the purple cauliflower is going to do it, dude. I think it'll be fine if we if we if we blanch it. Oh, she's like, pick me up again. <laughs> um, yeah, it's gonna work. It's gonna work out. It's gonna work out. Everything's gonna work out. Just in general, <laughs> everything's gonna be great. Let's test it. All in expert. Is this big enough? Sure. <laughs> I might have chosen something too small for this, actually.
You like how I test if something's hot? Just like touch it. <laughs> hey, is that hot? Is this burning hot? It was just on on flames. Hey, what's that feel like? Feels like something. These ones don't look great. Ideas? I need inspiration for next week. I have inspiration. That was a quick turnaround, right? <laughs> Sometimes I'm just thinking out loud and I'm just like, ugh. Um, somebody asked me today if I could make a hoisin cocktail. Because, yeah, I get those questions asked to me. And I can, because I can do anything. Um, but is that what I want? Will it work? Probably. In the end, what it would be is plum. So I bought plums. Plums are great. These are Italian plums. They have a pit. It is plum season right now, too, by the way. Those of you who care. Plums are pretty awesome. They can sit longer. You want them to sit. You want them to be like... Like Sith googly eyes. I almost did that. I do that a lot. I just like making faces out of food that I've made already. <laughs> I just took a bite out of it. It's a little firm. It's a little tart. That usually means it's not ripe enough. It tastes like a plum. What's your opinion? Plums or peaches? What's your Which one would you prefer? Out of the stone fruit category. Apricots fall in there too, but... I feel like apricots come and go very quickly. V-beans, hi! What's up? Every time I see apricots, I'm like, I want that. I'll get that tomorrow. And then I, I come back the next day and they're gone. They go bad fast. Nectarines are out there now too. I fucking love apricots, but I don't see them often. And you like plums, V-beans? Nice. I feel like this is really good for me. You ever, like, take a bite and start eating something and you're like, man, that's exactly what I needed. I'm getting that feeling right now. I feel like there's a lot of fiber and vitamins <laughs> in this right now. <laughs> yeah, it tastes like fiber and vitamins. It's like Metamucil. You know, I like my fruit to taste like Metamucil. Citrusy and diarrhea. Ah! I like that plums are smooth. I don't think these are ripe enough. They're like not soft enough, not sweet enough. I'm looking at eating. 
Peaches are a little fuzzy, which make my tongue itchy. Oh, weird. Hi, call me, Cap. Welcome in. I feel like I ate plums regularly as a child, but rarely ever as an adult. I'm not even sure if I remember what a plum tastes like. There's another fruit that is like a plum in flavor and texture, but it's called something else. And I'm trying to remember what it is. These are Italian plums. I think they also go by Empress plums. So they're, they're just a different shape. I'm going to pull out the stone, if you will. The pit. Take another bite. These are really good. Sometimes you just need fresh food. Yeah. There's a lot of stone fruit out there. Stone fruit season has been going longer than I expected. Also, I don't want to just boil these. I want them to taste like something. So I'm going to just lightly salt the water. You hate peach texture. That's, I think that's fair. I think it's fair. Because it kind of like almost mushes immediately. What is the other one? It's not a nectarine. It's not... White tea or stone fruit? Yeah, it is actually. Wait, is it? It's the fruit of an evergreen tree. It has a pit in the middle. I feel like it is. I think it is. It has a pit in the middle, so why wouldn't it be? Huh. Um, oh, what is it? It's not plum. It looks like a plum. It's got a thin outer skin. It's purple. It's got an orange flesh on the inside. I love peaches and dessert dishes. I did a peach. At, uh, it is an episode. I did a peach stream. I am not sure if I saved it. Which is really silly of me. I am not sure if I saved it. That was a that was a cool stream. But I made a savory peach dish because I didn't want to make something sweet. I feel like I always go like yeah, I'll pick up sweet stuff, but I'll decide I'm going to do the opposite with it in terms of the food because I make a sweet drink, but I don't make the sweet food. All right. We're going to do a thing here. Lost one. Lost an ice cube. Um, I'm boiling the cauliflower. And that is kind of like the opposite of what you should do with cauliflower. Maybe a different variety. It's possible. I feel like I'm thinking of nectarines, but I know I'm not because I looked at nectarines today and I was like, they kind of look like bigger, more firm peaches. Maybe I'm just thinking of purple nectarines. Like there's a purple variety of nectarine or something. Because nectarine sounds right. So what I'm doing is I just put this purple cauliflower into boiling water. Um, I'm going to let them go for a little bit, not long, until it starts bleeding the purple into the water, which it kind of is already. And then we are going to remove them and put them in ice water. Off topic, but persimmons are so good. Nothing's off topic here, really. 
considering what I've talked about here. <laughs> um, persimmons are awesome. I Persimmons are one of those fruit that you have to let it get so ripe all the way up until it's not okay to eat anymore. <laughs> you want to eat it like right before it looks like it's about to pop or fall apart. If you eat it too soon, it doesn't really taste like anything. And when I say like anything, I mean it tastes like it tastes like you should have waited. <laughs> uh, otherwise, it's uh, tomato like. Yeah, it's like too firm. It's like chewy. It doesn't make any sense. All right. So before I lose all the color in these purple cauliflower, I'm now going to take it out and put it in ice water. I boiled them. So if there was any mold on them. I say they should be dead. <laughs> it also slice it slightly cooks them, so I mean So we are now putting it from boiling water into cold water. Dare I say not enough ice, but it's fine. We'll manage. I've lost a little bit of my purple color on these. You can see the purple in the water. It's bled out a little bit. That would work as a coloring agent in various ways. But I wanted to preserve the color while killing everything on here. Kind of ruined them. <laughs> Persimmons are really good. I can't make cocktails with them because they don't really taste much like anything and the flavor will be lost with them. Um, Y'all, also, the other day, when I made my uh, Concord Grape, ingredient when i made my co uh, concord grape ingredient it turned out really well i ended up experimenting with it not on stream i'm so sorry um and i made a really good cocktail that i'm gonna put on a menu and i think it should be awesome it's gonna taste like <laughs> Uh, you know what's weird also is I gave one to one of my chef friends. Uh, did you just stick your hand in what was just boiling water? Would I be cooler if I did? Because <laughs> if so, yes. But really, no. I am so sorry. Oh, brother. I don't know if this cauliflower is any good. Well, at least I killed anything that was on it, right? It smells like cauliflower. It looks like cauliflower. <laughs> I think it's a duck. Actually. I don't know... Do, you, do any of you do this, by the way? When I am the most tired. When I am the most tired. I, uh... I think I give the best compliments to people. Because <laughs> I just say the first thing that pops into my head a lot of times. And it turns out that if I'm absolutely exhausted and I happen to have eaten... That means that I am okay, doing well, you know what I mean? If I'm not hungry, <laughs> then I give you great compliments. If I'm hungry, oh, then we have issues. <laughs> oh, buddy, we're going to have some issues. <laughs> not hungry and tired, the nicest person you've ever met in your life. Hungry and tired? Let's let's maybe switch it, switch the gears a couple couple uh couple back you know what i mean 
things are going to get weird otherwise. I think this will be fine. I think I killed whatever would kill me. Kill or be killed when it comes to food. You know what I mean? This damn cauliflower had it coming. It bore its teeth at me. And by teeth, I mean possibly killer mold. I kind of want to show you this, actually. Hang on. This is just boiling hot water. No big deal. Look at the color bleed. This is why I didn't want to boil it or even roast it. It kind of takes the good stuff away. The interesting part, you know? I want to make a hot sauce. What the hell was that? Oh. I swear this camera, this, when I say camera, I mean tablet, knows when I'm looking at it. <laughs> like, hey, what are you doing? As soon as I say something, works perfectly fine. I'm going to make these potatoes. Purple mold juice. <laughs> yes. I'm going to make these potatoes. We'll see. And we'll see after that. And then we're going to make a hot sauce. And then we're going to make... Uh, something with this. I have no idea what. Shh. <laughs> I had this idea, and then I kind of ruined it by boiling it, so I don't know. We'll find out. While we're at it, though, let's make sure all of my smoothies for the next week are spicy by blending up some habaneros in my blender. Habanero, peppers, don't you love that? I also have Serranos, but these are just for my personal use. <laughs> Later on. I think I'm going to use this in a little bit, so I don't want to actually put it in the sink. I got yellow things. I got habanero. I got bell pepper. I got... You know what? I got sun gold tomatoes. We're adding together orange stuff right now. And... I'm going to grab a couple turmeric. Why not? Turmeric's kind of a pain in the butt. It stains everything it touches. It's tiny. It looks like little weird creepy crawlies. Um, and when you peel it, the little outer outer edges of the of the root kind of get everywhere <laughs> just my opinion but it's right so to peel it i'm just going to leave it on the cutting board
Well, so let's do a thing here. If it's going to take up half my screen, it's got to do something. Probably should have just scooped them out so the liquid doesn't sit on the bottom. Because I feel like any latent liquid might burn. But it's got oil in it, so in theory, no it won't. Right? Right? We're going to grab our turmeric. I'm going to make sure all of my... You know, why am I... I'm like, yeah, I'm just going to make sure all of my fingers turn yellow for, for three days. Use a glove. <laughs> there you go it's interesting to smell turmeric when it's fresh like this if you've never worked with it before it's orange very bright orange when you end up cooking with it it will be yellow but it kind of smells like Citrus, there's like, uh, people use the word earthy a lot, you know? They especially use it for this root. When I smell turmeric, I smell... I don't know how to describe it. Because it smells like, if, if you took the powder, if you ever like used... The powder. Dried, which is dried and pulverized turmeric. It's like that. But imagine that it smells citrusy or bright instead. You know what I mean? I'm going to change my stream title. I don't like it. I don't know why. It just like popped in my head that I don't like it. So that's what I'm going to change it because I feel like it. Because that's why I'm doing anything that I'm doing, isn't it? Hang on. Yeah, that's what I changed it to. I know. <laughs> Hot. H-A-W-T. Hot. I don't care. It's fine. Is turmeric a root? It is. Is the plant used for anything? It is. It's used for the root. <laughs> I don't think the, the actual plant itself is used for anything. I'm pretty sure it's nondescript sprouting flower is just probably what it looks like like uh wasabi basically looks like a sprouting onion kind of a deal on the top i would imagine it's pretty close to it in terms of structure plant structure you know what i mean um the root has been in medicine for so long and, you know, that actually goes with a lot of these spices and herbs and everything else that we do. Almost everything. For example, like rosemary. Very medicinal purpose that it was put into everything. When it comes down to it, most of it is just that it's slightly an irritant to our insides. Which causes more blood flow, which causes better health. Because absorption rate increases plus... Uh, white blood cells flow more freely towards the area, keeping us healthier, etc., etc., etc. And some of them happen to taste good to us. 
when used in specific amounts. But of course, if you have a concentrate of anything, it's going to taste terrible. Just look at me when I was trying to make the pilk stuff, like, and I was tasting concentrates of lemon, orange, and grapefruit and things like that. And it was just like, it was like tasting static of, on a TV. Ugh. <laughs> um, I'm going to use one more just to overemphasize that it's going to be too much yellow. You know, why not overdo it? Wouldn't that be interesting? Why not overdo things ever so slightly? Oop, do not leave that there. Ugh. You ever want something to be truly yellow? Use turmeric. Seriously. Not the dry stuff. The dry stuff turns brown. Fresh. Fresh turmeric. This will make anything yellow. This will make your poop yellow. I, I don't know that for sure, but I was just wanted to say it, so... It was pretty good. Pretty good music. Am I feeling it right now? I don't know. Is this the jam I want to go with? It's pretty good. It's kind of a weird Saturday. My music choice today has been... Eclectic South American folk music. <laughs> For the most part. But right before I, uh, but right before I was done with work, I actually did move on to basically this genre that we're listening to right now. Is every food we see right now basically the same color for a reason? Yeah! It's like you get it. Um, this is just kind of like whatever. But this, I wanted a good flavorful pepper base to my, to my sauce. I wanted to add these with these because you can't just have habaneros. This is going to be way too spicy. It's going to be awesome. Um, and then I forgot that I had these. These are sun gold tomatoes. So like an heirloom variety of uh, cherry tomato, right? Um, essentially, I'm going to, just kind of blend everything together with some salt, acid, and other stuff. I should wash these two. Hang on. Um... Melo Juice, what's up? Man's out here cooking gourmet cuisine. I just pulled my Totina's pizza rolls out of the nuker. I swear to God, if one more person says that, I... If anyone thinks that I don't want some pizza rolls right now, I swear to God... Hi, Melo Juice. I want to make... I love pizza rolls. Come on. I'm just here doing stuff. I don't know what I'm doing. Why does anyone think I know what I'm doing? You'll mail them to me? Perfect. They'll probably still be good. <laughs> By the time they get here. I'm just, I'm just picking stuff up and putting it down. You know what I mean? Actually, though, that's, that's literally what I am doing. I I forgot most of the things I was doing. Uh, we're going to do turmeric. We're going to do turmeric. We had hot dogs and cheese and tortillas tonight. Hell yeah. How do how was it? Honestly, like was it good? I kind of want it. 
Hot dogs and cheese. I feel like I would open up a can of beans with that. Like, I'd be like, all right, I got hot dogs. I got cheese. I got tortillas. Fuck it. Any bean. I don't even care if it's garbanzos or chickpeas. Black beans would be my preference, I would say, though. I don't know if any of you have preference on beans. But I'd be like... I'd cook the smoked meat, a.k.a. hot dogs. Which hot dogs basically taste like kielbasa anyway. And I love kielbasa. Um... I'm de-seeding these habanero, by the way. Hi, Hubris. As long as you're eating, it's valid. Hell yeah, it is. 1,000%. Sounds good to me. Yeah, you, you... You, like, stir up in a little saucepan the beans. You make some franken-beans. I'll make some franken-beans. And it, it'll be really good. You know? Make some franken beans. Um, throw some cheese on that bee. Put it in a tortilla. And then I E my tortilla with my bee and my frank. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you still have a little power here, but I've tortured you enough today. Oh, yes. Everyone be nice. As if I had to say that. Pretty sure I'm addicted to hot dogs. Uh-oh. <laughs> Every morning I wake up. I reach over to my bed stand and I open up the drawer and it's nothing but hot dogs. Sheila says, Not again! You're back on the sauce! And I'm like, it's mustard. You don't know me. I don't even know who you are anymore. <laughs> anyway. Kosher beef franks or what? Because I'm just saying. They're pretty good. Uh, my family would pick up kielbasa from Suyaki's. And I just fucking tear into him in the car. He can't even beat fresh kielbasa. And we're talking about the gray stuff, right? The fresh kielbasa? Or are we talking... Is it still smoked? Are you just, like, buying a sausage of kielbasa and tearing into it on the ride home? Because that's freaking impressive. I gotta say. If you don't know what I'm doing right now, I just de-seeded habaneros. I chopped up some turmeric. I am taking off the green parts of any of these sun gold tomatoes that I still have here. What else do you do with kielbasa? Get creative! I use it to retrieve... <laughs> I use it to retrieve things I put too far and too high up on a shelf. And then I eat it. Um... You always, I always eat mine in the car ride. Hoke. Hole? Um, sick. It's kind of like wearing your... Something about this isn't right, so I'm not going to use it. I, like, was feeling that tomato, and it was just a little too firm. So we're not going to use it. Um, sounds like a good time to rub your eyes. You know, is this going to be the day that I do something with hot peppers and don't rub my eyeballs? Is this the day? I'm not vibing with this particular tomato. Yeah, no, it wasn't good. This one either. I don't like it. I don't like the cut of its, um, jib. Bad jib. Just bad jibs all around, you know? These are actually awesome that they've stayed good this long. So you should never refrigerate your tomatoes. 
because generally it will kill the flavor of them. It'll break down the enzymes because it'll like accidentally freeze some of them and make them weird. But you should be leaving your tomatoes out so they ripen properly and taste good still. What the hell was that? Oh, it's like a sunflower seed. Literally, I have I have sunflowers in my in my bouquet. Um, Suyaki's is in Philly. Is it? I go to chefs. I haven't been there in a long time, though. Tomato enzymes fighting off the cold. Yeah, it's a battle. It's a constant battle. Purpose, want, wane, etc. Guys, I'm starting to get my second wind an hour and a half into stream. I'm sorry I was so down to start. I honestly could have just went straight to sleep. <laughs> I could have just been like, I'm done. But now I'm like making stuff. I have like a motivation of where I'm going with it. What I'm doing. I'm breaking down. Breaking down a little pepper. Gonna pull out the seeds out of the top like this. Hell yeah. And then I'm going to cut it in half, and then I'm going to take out more of the seed. Well, I'm going to cut the end off, and then I'm going to take out the, the little seed part. The little ribs. You don't want no ribs. This ain't no pork stand. You know what I mean? Why am I going into the southern accent so many times? The Frankenbean's got in my head. It's pervaded my memory. Uh, Salmon Street. Yeah, that's a little ways. Uh, I don't know Philly well enough, but I don't know if that means anything to you. I, I'm sure I could figure it out. I have a very good idea because all of those places for kielbasa are around the same areas. Know what I mean? So, like, what if I left this one whole and I made it a little cup? This, like, reminds me of watching TikTok at random times of the day and somebody... Some asshole decides that they're gonna like, I'm making a cocktail! And they'll like cut open a bell pepper and put the worst mixed thing you've ever seen, the worst balanced thing. It's just like Daly's sour mix and tequila warm into a bell pepper. And they're like, oh my god, I'm drinking it out of a bell pepper. How creative. God damn it. Nothing against that because they get likes. <laughs> So who cares? <laughs> In the Polish neighborhood? Yeah. 99% sure. I've probably driven by it. It's good stuff. There's a lot to watch that I disagree with. You hurt me with that description alone. They do it, man. Hi, Edlack. How you doing? They do it. They make some... They make weird stuff. I think I brought it up because I made a Negroni last night on stream, right? A Negroni being equal parts gin, sweet vermouth, and Campari. Stirred, chilled, strained, over ice. Orange peel. I was watching Anthony Bourdain make... Rest in peace. Make a... Uh, a Negroni. He's like, this is a dark magic... It should taste. It should have tasted good based on the ingredients, and you put it together, and it tastes good. I'm like that. That's true, but also the ingredients are fine. <laughs> but like, he made it, and he's like, "Yeah, you put in one ounce of this, and one ounce of this, and one ounce of this, which is the right amount, right?" I watch him. He's just eyeballing it. It's like three ounces of this, two ounces of this, and one and a half ounces of this. <laughs> And I'm like, you know what? It probably was fine in the time and the place that he was having it. So who cares? But every time I watch cocktails being made, the proportions are so out of whack that I'm like, you're going to hurt somebody <laughs> when I'm watching it. You ever feel like trying a new place? It comes 
with my regards back from your meat eating days. I'll see the ghost, the ghost of Sylvan past, and they're just chowing down. Like, I'll have, like, a flashback, and I'll see you just, like, eating a, a kielbasa, just, like, crushing it. That'd be awesome. What is the most overcomplicated drink order someone has ever ordered? You know, people don't know. Nothing is that complicated, in my opinion. It's just variations of pain. Um, I don't think anything's... It, it's hard for somebody to make a complicated order. I wouldn't remember it if I did. Um, because the people who would know how to make an extremely overcomplicated order would probably not make an overcomplicated order. I get up a lot of apologies when when somebody who knows how to do that does order it. They're like, hey, I'm really sorry, but like... Is it possible for you? And like, they'll even apologize. And there's no way I can be mad at them about it. I'm like, yeah, that's fine. Let's just do it. Let's figure it out together. I'm actually nice. Probably nicer on Twitch. Because you guys are nice. And I am a nice person to bartend for you. I don't mind. I don't mind most things. I, I'll work it out. In fact, if it's like a good challenge, I'm like, let's do it. Unless I have to like literally make a new ingredient. Oh, hi there, Cheese. Oh, hi there, Mahal. How are you? How was your stream earlier? Saw you were playing some Final Fantasy. What's the dumbest drink order? Ah, that's not a thing. Or silliest, we should say. But, um, I would say, um... I made a brief post about dirty martinis. Somebody went beyond the filthy. And yes, somebody does. People do order filthy martinis. They, um. They'll call it. They're like, I want the dirtiest, filthiest, just, just absolute most disgusting thing you can make me. And I'm just like, oh, okay. Like, they're like, no, like, I want it extra dirty, but I, I don't want it just extra dirty. I want it filthy. And I'm like, why did you say it like that? But okay. Um, I know exactly how much you want. And what I said, and when they go to that level, it's a little over 30% olive juice. To answer your question while explaining it. If you go any further than that, it is now half olive juice. And that has happened once. They, I made the filthy martini. And they're like, can I have a shot of olive juice with that? Like, you want alcoholic olive juice. <laughs> and that, was, that was a funny thing. That was probably the silliest order. It's hard to make it truly so. I'm good. Stream is fun and chaotic as always. How am I? I am tired. But I have achieved second wind for the moment. I'm about to make a cool hot sauce. About to make a cool hot sauce. With a bunch of yellow and orange things, including habanero, turmeric, yellow bell pepper, and sun gold tomato. I need to season that when I do that. But you know what? On the topic. I'm going to I'm going to roast these potatoes. I'm going to put them in right now actually. It is time. I would say we're sitting at about 400 degrees there for anyone who's trying to Witness the posterior of the posterity. Either way. Um, for anyone that missed it. It is also seasoned with. Coriander, black pepper, Aleppo pepper, ground mustard, 
lemon juice, salt, and a splash of champagne vinegar. And it's been marinating in such as like a dry marinade for a little while. Exciting. Is it? Is it? Am I still? Am I? Am I taking a, the wind out of anyone's sails right now? Does anyone need me to to pep up my step a little bit? You can tell me. It's legal to tell me right now. Hey, John, cheese. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta kick it up a notch. You gotta kick it into a second or third or fourth gear because this isn't working out for us. Okay. I'm gonna go to sleep. And I would agree with you. Now you are fine. No, you're fine. Okay. We need to do stuff. I have worked out what I want my hot sauce to be. This. In a blender with some shit. It's an exact recipe. tell you exactly how they did the murder. Know what I mean? No, you? You're great? Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Don't lie to me, though. It's unnecessary. I can take it. Okay? These are my items. <laughs> It is going to need a little liquid to break down. Maybe I should have put the bell peppers on top. It's fine. Don't worry about it. You're panicking. Stop panicking. You would ideally not lie to me. Follow your heart, John. But I could body at least five sympathetic yawns and still be here. Oh, hell yeah. I don't even have yawns to give. I have Johns to give, and Johns to get, but no, no, no Johns, no Johns to be had. I'm fine. Nope. Need a semi-neutral vinegar. We're gonna do rice, rice wine vinegar. I only had like that much in the bottle left. John's got Johns. Yeah, Johns, Johns, and Johns, 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 Johns. John's. We're good. Uh, I want lime juice in here. I think lime is, is pretty awesome. Good morning. Good morning, Yanti. How are you? I'm getting a lime. You know what I was considering doing with this uh, sauce as well? Is it really as well? What I was considering doing with this sauce was you're well, hell yeah. Vinegar, neutral. <laughs> Not pH. Uh, in terms of funkiness, you know, I'm going for the funk level of, let's say I'm going for Grand Funk Railroad and not Parliament Funkadelic in terms of funk level of vinegar. You know what I mean? And really it's to complement the lime juice. I'm going to do lime juice. I don't understand what you mean. Don't don't worry. It wasn't really meant to be understood. I'm sorry. Um, I'm gonna add a little water. Just a little. To give it something to go into. I'm gonna add a little salt. So, uh, vinegar is made from a lot of different kinds of, like, juice or sugar bases, uh, where 
you know, the bacteria eats it and leaves out some acid, right? Well, that requires fermentation to happen a little bit. Uh, which means... Um, plenty of salt. It's a sauce. Which means that it's going to taste like the source that it came from. If I use champagne vinegar, it's going to taste like spoiled champagne grapes. If I use rice vinegar, it's going to be like uh, fermented rice. If it's red wine, if it's um, sherry, if it's anything that is being made, the vinegar is being made from sugars, it's going to taste like the fruit that it's coming from. And certain things will have a stronger base flavor than others. You want something that kind of just tastes like vinegar. But if you only use white vinegar, I, I have white vinegar. I chose to use rice vinegar over white vinegar because white vinegar literally just tastes like acid. It kind of tastes like a cleaning product in my opinion, but it has a place. It takes on other flavors very easily. So I like to use rice vinegar instead of distilled uh, instead of distilled white vinegar because distilled white vinegar is basically the vodka of vinegars while while rice vinegar is like tequila to give an um, allegory to it. Something is missing here. Salt, the base, vegetables, spicy, acid, pinch of sugar. Pinch of sugar to counterbalance the vinegar and the salt. It's apple cider vinegar, really magical. I think apple cider vinegar has one of the strongest base flavors. Has one of the strongest flavors um, of all the vinegars. It's almost impossible to use unless you're using it to be something that tastes like apple cider vinegar. And something to bind it to the potatoes that we were using. And that would be ground mustard and coriander. What's in there now? We have habanero peppers, fresh turmeric root, yellow bell peppers, and sun gold tomato. With rice vinegar, lime juice, salt, sugar, ground mustard, and coriander. We are missing garlic. I mean, I'm just keep adding stuff to it, don't I? What am I making? I'm making a hot sauce. A sauce, in general, to go with the potatoes that I'm currently roasting in the oven. Which I just got a whiff of. They are definitely cooking. Good amount of garlic here. And you know what else it actually does need is a little bit of onion powder. It's essentially a type of salsa, but we're going to blend it smooth and I'm going to heat it up to kind of bind all the flavors into one solid flavor because otherwise it's like a chunky mess. 
So once I blend it and it's smooth, I'll heat it up to a simmer, then take it off heat so it doesn't oxidize, and it's done, in my opinion. Ugh. Onions are goaded. They are. Um, but I'm not roasting any onions right now, and I don't feel like changing that. <laughs> So I just use a little onion powder to get by. Mm, we're hanging out. After this song, I'm going to hit up my like list, and I'm just going to start playing it at random. And if I feel a vibe or a mood, in terms of how I'm feeling right now, that's what we're going to go with. Hi, Symmetry. How are you? Hope you're doing really well. I'm gonna go get me a gerb. This man wrote a song about getting a job in Detroit, working for the union auto workers. Let's go. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. Except that one time that the auto factories took all the money from the government for grants to hire more people and upgrade their facilities and they didn't. They bought their own stocks and fired everybody and moved them all overseas. It's almost like it should be regulated. Bunch of jabronis, if I do say so myself. Oh, I don't know why I'm trying to mince it. I'm going to blend it. <laughs> it's like come on man just cut it so it doesn't get caught ah beans thank you I would have forgotten. I do actually need to do that. We do need to add another fat source, such as an oil, to emulsify it. I completely forgot. That was a close one. We're going to use olive oil. Going to use a good one. A good healthy splash. So it emulsifies properly. And I think we're in good shape now. Frankly. The only thing left will be to heat it after this. This is probably going to do weird stuff to my mic. So, I'm going to turn it off. All right, I'm back. 
Smooth blend indeed. And emulsify is a kind of weird word, but it's a fun word. It's like you blended it, but you blended it on next level. Look at this color that's about to come out at you. Ooh. I'm going to heat it for good. Hello? Hi. I think we're okay. Okay. So, that was weird. I think that an ungrounded portion of a cable made the magnet in the microphone have a little... a little moment. Which is my only explanation. Howdy, that's very yellow, isn't it? Which is weird. But you remember how you were like, I could hear the flames. I think that the plasma from the flames did something to the magnets. That's my scientific explanation. Through the fire and flames, we carry on. Yeah, literally. <laughs> like... What I was trying to say, though, was this hot sauce here is awesome. Also, this is done heating. It's not that... It's actually mild. I know that sounds crazy or wild, whatever. I'm sorry. Um... I think magnets. Yeah, it's, it's all magnets. It sounds like we're being cooked a lot. Yeah, sorry about that. I'm sorry if that was, like, really weird. Love all of our random descriptions. Yeah, you, you, you all did a great job. 
It is fantastic, though. This hot sauce, which is now hot, literally, um, is actually kind of mild. We did use sun gold tomatoes. We have yellow bell peppers. We have turmeric. We have habanero. The habanero makes it spicy, but we only use four small habanero. Um, and it made it because of how much we have. It's not that spicy. I like the clock. Is that new? It is. I had an idea and I'm going to test it, but it's only useful when it's useful. <sighs> For our streamer friends out there. Wow, there's a lot of turmeric flavor now that I taste it. I'm also like roasting my, my blender with boiling or with water. Uh, the clock, I mean, it does help you all know what time it is for me. But really, uh, your chats are all time stamped according to my local time, even if I go back and look at them. Which means that I will have to, if I have to look back on it, um, if something is said between us or something like that. Um, it means that I have to guess what time it was based on when I started, because to me, when I look through the VOD or any of the recorded video, I can only see, I can only see the, um, What? Oh my god. If I look through it, I can only see the time elapsed on the video. I can't see what time it was related to that comment, which is time stamped with my local time. If I look at it, now I can look at the video, see the timestamp, and match it up to the clock that's on here. It's 6 a.m. for you? Yeah. It is currently 11 p.m. for me. So by having a clock on somewhere on your stream, you can properly read the timestamps. Yeah, it's a way for me to accidentally never leave a marker again. <laughs> and, uh, in reality, I should be putting way more markers than I am, though. This will be a shorter stream, so it'll be a lot easier to go through, but when it's six hours of footage, you kind of have to look at the whole thing. Because one day I left my stream, like I was looking at stuff. Um, I was looking for something specific, I found it, but then I accidentally left it like going for a while because I was just listening to it in the background. And there were like a few things that were like hilarious that happened or between us or me or doing stuff and that I was talking about. There was some stuff, or really interesting. And when I went back, I let it run, and I would have totally missed it. I would have, I forgot, like, something happened, you know? That's done. Hot sauce. We drowning in it yet? Not yet. I do need to transfer this. There is a good amount of acid in it. I don't know how great, great it's going to stay. If I don't... Well, what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to jar it. Gotta go to work now. Have a great day at work, Yanti. Take care. Have fun? I, I will. It's going to be great. It's going to be great. We're chilling. And that's what's important, you know? I'm going to jar this up and hopefully not make a mess. I'm just going to put this towel under it <laughs> right now.
Well, it appears that I have way more than I need, which is a good thing. It's mild, honestly. It's habanero, but it's mild. So, yeah, it's a hot sauce, but honestly, super mild. I'm just going to lightly put this on there. I want it to be able to cool down without imploding. Um, but I do actually need more room. Because the potatoes, I believe, are done. How did that get over there? Hot sauces get more intense or more mild when they rest for a while? Uh, it depends. I've had some of them get hotter, but really, it doesn't get less hot. If you leave it for a long time and it starts to do a lacto fermentation, it does get milder actually. But I consider it to be more uniform. Perfect. Perfecto potato. But that requires uh, lacto-fermentation. That's a whole nother situation entirely. I did say when I do Saturday streams, it's so Saturday, just so you all know what my schedule is like in general, I do work a lot um, in terms of still being able to stream. And I want to stream on Saturday nights like I'm doing right now. Um, that does mean... I still need to remain flexible. These are good looking potatoes. I still do have to remain flexible, but I should be streaming late night on Saturdays unless something comes up that I want to do or need to do, um, or I'm, I have to work. So I'm still flexible about it, but, uh, ideally, yeah, I am streaming into late night on Saturdays. So. Because it's a later stream and it is ending up, it will end up being like a little bit shorter. I'm going to try to keep things a little bit simple and not overdo it on Saturdays. And this is like the first time I'm experimenting having a long day and then going into stream. Thank you for the follow. What's the most intense peppers you can tolerate? The hottest one you can genuinely enjoy. I don't think I've eaten or been sold a pepper that I it was too hot for me to like it. Honestly, those peppers I made the tostadas with about two weeks ago, they're called Buena Muladas. They were the purple ones. They were as hot, if not hotter, than habanero. And I could I still would bite directly into it. These kind of need to cool off. But they're in good shape. Potatoes came out great, y'all. And we got our yellow hot sauce going. Um, I've never been sold a pepper, though, that was too hot for me to eat. I'm sure I could try to get, like, a Carolina Reaper or a Ghost Pepper. I've never eaten one of those directly. So I have no idea. But I've, I've never, I've been like, God damn, that's hot. Like after I've eaten it, but that doesn't mean that I can't eat it. And I can still taste it. I've built up my tolerance to spiciness for a lot of years. You've had both of those? Hell yeah. I've had hot sauces made from them. Like, look at these potatoes, dude. Uh, it doesn't stay in focus. It stays focused on that, but not up here. <laughs> Ghost is okay. Reaper just hurts. That's the other part is they're bred to like basically hurt you. I want to try a bite. It's great. It's a roasted potato. Herbal. Mildly spicy because I did put Aleppo pepper on it. 
the acid, you know, just helps brighten it up. It doesn't taste just like potato. Potatoes need acid when you do them. Like, you need to put lemon juice. You need to put something on them. I put both vinegar and lemon juice. You should believe me on that one. I did put it on before cooking them. It helps break it up. It helps make it not be cakey. Like a cakey kind of texture. And it's just good. Yeah. Awesome. So the things that are missing in terms of the seasoning of this potato. I like I'm just using these. The two things that are missing in terms of the seasoning of this potato. Is what is in the hot sauce. And by this point, it's not actually hot sauce. I wouldn't call it that. I, I So I'm calling it ahi, ahi oro, which just means gold sauce. Because that's what it is to me. It's gold sauce. This isn't where this goes. Yeah, it's gold sauce. And I'm going to have a lot for the rest of the week, so. <laughs> you want? They're vegan. No butter. Just oil. Just some good regular olive oil. Okay. Honestly, I'm kind of hungry. I'm going to have some potato. Let's make a plate. Um... I need a plan. Because I would have forgotten. Because I would have forgotten that I have chives and scallions. We're going to put a bunch of chives and a bunch of scallions on them because that makes it really nice. This is where the onion that I didn't put in the initial roast goes or comes from now. Green onions, y'all. Just a family favorite. This is going to be too much. <laughs> is it though? These are some really uh, broken up scallions. Here, I'll take a little one. There, that's good. So these are almost frozen. What the hell? Awesome. I'm going to separate them so they don't bug me. And then... Do I scallion them beforehand or after? Both. We're going to save some of the potatoes, and then we're going to plate the other parts. Now, what you want to do... Did we get rid of the cauliflower? I forgot. It's over there. I don't think I want to use it. I'm going to be honest with you. I. It was only like a dollar. I'm just like kind of disappointed in it. It's mocking me at this point. <laughs> so. I don't want to say I failed on it. Because I didn't really do anything to it. But I waited too long. There's a big difference between failing cooking it. And then letting it spoil before you get to it. Which is a whole nother kind of fail. So what I'm going to do here. Is I'm essentially going to add some of it to the bottom. So that we assure that there is enough. Right? We assure that there is, in fact, enough of the sauce to begin the coating process. Do a little spread to make it a little bit nicer. Now, look at the contrast that's going to happen with this, by the way. You know? It does kind of look like a soup. Somebody said it looks like a butternut squash soup, and they were correct. And now we're just going to take some of our potatoes, our fingerlings. I mixed in a couple pieces of russet too. And we're just going to lay it in there. We're not going to toss them around because by eating them, that's your tossing. You don't want to put too many because, you know, it's not a huge plate. This is a small plate. Hmm... 
but you don't want to, you want it to be like two layers of potato. That way it looks like a hefty portion, you know? And then we're going to put skin side up on some of them. Any of the ones that had, uh, had them on the, on the bottom, we put skin side up on a few to show that they are in fact awesome. And the other ones kind of get roasted like that. Yeah. Yeah, see? Yeah. I'd say that's enough. And then one for good measure. <laughs> These would be great with cilantro on top. If you don't like cilantro, more onions. But for now, I'm gonna cut my chives in half so I know where I'm where I'm coming from. And then I'm gonna make very tiny chive cuts. I did sharpen my knife two days ago. So we shouldn't have any sticking really happening. I think I need another potato on there. It doesn't look... looks a little scant. Hmm. Right here. There you go. Grab a bunch with dry hand. Hold your hand up high. And Onion Bay. I had a bunch bounce. <laughs> Onion Bay. <laughs> okay, that's enough because I don't want too many to pile up around the outside of it. But it's starting to like settle in. Hello there. Thank you for the follow. I'm going to now also do some scallion because uh, it's good. I'm not going to use the white part of the scallion right now. We're going to only use the green part. So I'm just going to go ahead and cut that off. I definitely grabbed more than I needed, but at least I can pick and choose which ones I want to use now. Um, I don't really like... Uh, circle scallions all the time, but I think in our case here for potatoes, I think it goes well. So trying to keep it even, trying to keep it directly perpendicular to the scallion itself, green onion, whatever, we make little rings. Like that. I kind of got into my chives there for a second. Whatever. Uh, we're going to... We're going to actually close this one. We're going to get a little bit closer because we don't want it to bounce off and, and hit and go down to the sides. We want it to stay on top. Or as much as possible, I should say. Very good. We're almost there. Hell yeah. You know, it's actually been a really long while since I've done a Saturday stream, y'all. Thank you for coming out and hanging out with me. It's really kind of y'all. We will be doing Saturday streams regularly, though. So it'll be Thursday, Friday, Saturday, for the most part. If you have been enjoying what we have been doing this whole time, make sure uh, to drop a follow. Hanging, banging, talking, 
making some nice stuff. When we when we make um when we make our final sweep at what we're doing. Hang on, I lost chat. I'm sorry. All right, I got it. I was real happy when I got the notification in your life. Thank you, Cap. That's really kind of you to say. I was worried nobody would get the notification because <laughs> that's what we think about. As you can see, it's clearly worked out. Even a dish that seemingly didn't take that much to do has come together as what I would call composed. In my opinion. In my unhumble opinion. <laughs> it's fucking sick. <laughs> Scallywags. Um, the last part is to make sure that there is enough sauce. The sauce on the bottom is a great base to, for it to sit on. But you want to take some more of your sauce, essentially. Like so. Um, and then we're going to let it fall off of the end. It's not perfectly smooth. It's still a little chunky, to be honest. So it's not going to come off perfectly. But that's fine. We're going to do that, and we're going to let it fall off the end of the, the spoon. But we're going to go across. We're going to try to make lines. So you want it to, like, come out as, like, a full-blown, like, stream. So don't dribble it, or else it won't do it. You want to be, like, aggressive with the line. Like that. So I'm just going to do three, because it's not a huge plate. But like that, you make a strong line. Any leftovers to kind of make sure that it communicates that it was in fact not added last-ish? Boom! I would say it is done. Heck yeah. And now I'm going to show you on the real camera. Over yonder. Yeah. I think we're in good shape, y'all. I'm pretty happy with how it came out. I'm going to be honest with you. For something I kind of just put together. Winging it is when I'm strongest. Quick potato situation. And you know what? It's vegan for our friends out there, just so you know. It is. It looks so good. Thank you. I'm going to have a bite now. With the sauce. All the composition. Yeah. Well.
was awesome. It is awesome. It's got... It's spicy because it's in literally a sauce that's spicy. But it's got a lot of onion flavor from all the green onions I've used. The potatoes are perfectly roasted, blistered, not cakey on the inside. There is amount of acid going on with everything with the sauce and with the potatoes. And it's composed put together. A little bit of turmeric flavor, not a lot. But it's the aftertaste that's turmeric. And the sauce, frankly, complements the potatoes perfectly. So it's like... It's awesome. It's very much like a salsa. A habanero salsa. But like smooth. But that's the point. Golden sauce. Mm -hmm. Hey boy. Uh, that looks good. What's a John's? <laughs> That's Philly vernacular. For... Uh, anything, basically. It's like referring to um, a person, place, or thing. It's a noun, <laughs> essentially. <laughs> Philadelphia. How you doing? Welcome in. Hope you're having a nice night. This is delicious. This is delicious. I'm very happy with it. It's a John? No, no, it's just... It's J-A-W-N, that's how you spell it. Um, it's a saying in the city. Um, where it's like, I'm going to go get uh, a haircut would be like, I'm going to go get a hair John done. <laughs> oh, that's an adjective. Or a verb. Or it's like, yeah, you just take the John down to the other station and uh, they're making like a train, you know? And it works. Or, or yeah, I'm going to go pick up a John from the store. Or, you can combine it with adjectives. So, like, if this is vegan, but I don't want to say it's a potato dish. You can just be like, this is a vegan John. <laughs> Them Johns over there. Exactly. Love Philly? Hell yeah. <laughs> this is awesome. Very flavorful. Bit, bit spicy. Lots of starches because it's potato. Um, There's so much flavor. And also the color is frankly freaking awesome. Oh my god. Good sauce. It was also like a late term afterthought. I went and got the stuff to make this sauce right before stream. And then I came back and then I wondered if I was going to stream today. And I was like, no. Nah, nah, nah. <laughs> Because I was tired. I worked today and um, had to interact with a lot of people. What's in the yellow sauce? Um, so the sauce itself is fresh turmeric root, which I have a jar of it here now. We have fresh turmeric root. Habanero peppers, yellow bell peppers, sun gold tomatoes, um, garlic, salt, sugar, lime juice, rice vinegar, and coriander and mustard and ground mustard. Mm-hmm. 
I also made too much of it. But sauce is pretty useful. Like, I didn't even use any that was in the jar. <laughs> I used it out of my pot. I heated it up, too, so that it, all the flavors would make into one. So it didn't taste like a disjointed flavor. Healthy and spicy. It really is actually healthy. Oh, there's olive oil in it, too, to emulsify it. Almost forgot about that part. A little. But that's the point, yo. This is awesome. I'm very happy with this. Hope you're all having a very nice night. I have yet to say it this stream. But thank you. I did say thank you for being here. But what I mean to say as well. And I say it once or twice. Is that I hope you have made and done something nice for yourselves today. I'm here to help you know. Uh, that it's not some weird mystery black magic warlock business to make good food or good cocktails at home. You can do it yourself. It didn't take that much effort, frankly, to do this. I just roasted potatoes that were sitting in spices and other seasonings. I went through the process. You were here for it. And I generally don't follow recipes. But once you get in the habit of following recipes and learning that way, you begin to see patterns in the structures and how things are cooked and how they're constructed together. And you can formulate your own recipes. I have never made this before. I've never had it on potatoes, that's for sure. I've never made this sauce before. And you know what? It's an awesome sauce. No pun intended. But it's awesome sauce. Would recommend. A habanero, tomato, and bell pepper blend. Extremely flavorful. Turmeric aftertaste. Good acid to it. So seasoned enough with salt and sugar. You plan on it after a good recipe or good rest? Hell yeah. And that's the same case for me too. Uh, I worked a lot today and had a good time. It wasn't a bad day. I just worked longer than I expected. Um, and thusly, I am hanging out here with you. Guys, um, thank you all for coming. Thank you for hanging out with me. I was going to do two more things. So on Saturdays, my plan is to go from around 8 o'clock. It depends on work to go from around eight o'clock until late night, like 2 a.m. It is currently 1132. I am just a little bit tired from everything I have done this week uh, and put together. So I would like to uh, actually call it here, clean up and go cut some video. Because, again, we're going to, uh... Miles to give you my seed. Thank you for traveling 500 miles. <laughs> um, because, frankly, I just, uh, I want to go work on some stuff and sit down. Uh, that sounds awesome. It is awesome. I'm going to have another potato. In your honor. We're going to raid a friend. Thank you for the stream. Thank you for being here, y'all. We're going to raid a friend. Just hanging out. Doing their thing. I want to see if they're going to keep going. If you don't mind hanging out for a second. Will this VOD be up? It will. If I, if I cut the stream short. Um, if I had cut the stream short, like, and not cooked anything, I probably would, would not publish the VOD, but the VOD will be up. Um, also, on that note, I will also be soon, I will be having a, a VOD channel on YouTube, where I will upload all my VODs so they don't disappear. 
um, and that easier access because, frankly, it's a better interface to find them. Uh, we are working on 10-minute videos specifically for the food recipe sections of each stream that I do. I will cut them into condensed, digestible segments so you can easily find the recipes themselves. Um, and, and, I will be also uh, continuously putting out some of our highlight moments that maybe you have missed onto TikTok, of course. So, check out the fo neat photos that you have on Instagram, on Twitter, random posts, TikTok for quick views, and then we have YouTube. It's listed down in my About Me. I didn't fix the command yet. Hello there. Thank you for the follow. Um, do not forget to follow the channel if you haven't already. Thank you for stream. Thank you. Do something nice for yourself, cheese. You deserve it. Hey, thank you. Um, let's raid a buddy. We're going to raid our friend Glow who is currently playing Kingdom Hearts, a game that I have no investment in whatsoever, but I have invested in Glow as a person because he's a really, really nice dude and a really pleasant place to hang out with. I lurk there very often. His name is Glorious Royal. He, him pronouns. And a great time. Be sure to say hi to Glow. Um, what's our raid message gonna be? Show us the show us the keyblade. Show us the keyblade. Again, uh, everyone, make sure you take care of yourselves. Do something nice for yourselves. The thing that I did that was nice was I made this potato stuff, so now I don't have to worry about dinner a couple times. Uh, I'll be back on Thursday around 3 p.m. Eastern time. Remember to hydrate. Remember to eat. Remember to take your meds. Remember to have a great night. Go play some video games. Go relax. Go take a shower. And get ready for bed. Unless you're getting ready for work, in which case, good morning. Have a great day. Bye, y'all. I appreciated your company. I hope you have a really good day. See y'all later. Uh, chaos. The chaos.